Okay, so I'm looking at Diet Pie today, uh, just a first look, just to uh, sort of go through how it looks and what it does. Uh, it's a very different startup to a lot of the other systems I've been using. Um, and there's, uh, in the initial setup, there's loads and loads of configuration, but I'll just log in. And to log in, you just put in root and diet pie. Obviously, it's advisable to change the password if you're going to keep the system. Uh, I've overclocked this, and if I type in CPU at this stage, uh, you can see that I'm uh, 1900 megahertz, 600 on the graphics. And uh, I... I tried higher, uh, I, I tried my usual 2750, but it wouldn't accept it. I tried 1950, 600, I tried all sorts of things, and this was the highest I could get it to, to boot and run at. Um, so the other one I can try, you can see these options, Diet Pi Launcher, Diet Pi Config, Diet Pi Software, you can do all that within the system as well. But if I type in HTOP, uh, you can see various different things uh, that it shows you, various different information. So if I quit that, with F10 and then press uh, type start X it will boot up the proper system and you see it happens in no time at all and it looks a little bit hacker uh, in the style that they've gone for uh, obviously especially with this desktop you can have this in white as well now I haven't really put anything on this at all uh, it, the idea is it's a super light super small uh, distro of Linux and uh, it's actually Raspbian that it's, that it's based on um, but it is very snappy, very fast to use, but also highly customizable. Uh, so you can see there's a thing on here. This just boom uh, talks about sort of higher end audio. So I think that's using uh, higher quality sound cards and things with it. Uh, again, I'm only I'm only having a first look. Uh, so there's very little on here. There's a text editor um, on the internet. It comes with Firefox. It didn't come with Chromium. I tried to put Chromium on because I wanted to try it with YouTube, but uh, it doesn't boot on this. Uh, and they did, they did warn that because so many things have been stripped out, uh, that certain things might, you might need to add extra things in to get them working. Uh, and it's, it's not the sort of thing that I would end up using, but I figured uh, it'd be interesting to show people because it might be exactly what they're looking for. Um, so we've got preferences. There is, there is a, uh, a white version of this logo, a white, a black, white, a black. Uh, so let's go up to these top bits. So config. If I hit execute, you can see that it comes up uh, in this very sort of basic looking style, but very, very fast to use and loads of different options. Uh, interestingly, this defaulted to 1080 without me having to do anything. And, and most distros I've tried uh, default to 4K, which means my capture card doesn't work properly. And, and uh, also the desktop looks, looks incredibly small uh, or the, the icons look incredibly small on my 43 inch Sony TV. So there's various different options in there. Just hit escape to go back and go back. So that's config. Then there's launcher. And there's so much you can change in this. And all this comes up on the initial setup. So you can really choose exactly what you want to do. So we've got Diet Pi software, config, drive manager, auto start services, just boom, all sorts of things on here. And also an update. Uh, there's an updater in this as well. Backup, Sync, Explorer. And if I cancel out of that, or oh, you have to escape and enter. If I go into the software bit, this is uh, differently handled to anything else I've seen. Uh, so if you go, you can do search. So you can say, uh, let's go for Spotify, because I know that's on there because I searched for it before. Uh, and then you can install it with this system. Uh, but also you can, uh, where is it, select software, uh, software optimized. So I was going to put Chromium on and I was going to uninstall SharePort. So what do I have to do now? Software usage, pressing escape, setting back will clear. Oh, okay, so let's press return and then select uninstall, select install software for removal. Install or remove software. Go start installation from selected software. Oh, there you go. So completely different to anything else I've tried uh, as a Linux distribution. Uh, it's uh, yeah, really, really different look and feel to it, but it is nice and snappy. It has all this auto update. There seems to be loads of security things in there as well. Uh, I couldn't get the, uh, so while it's doing that in the background, 
if I call up the file manager. I couldn't get it to connect to my network drive. It basically just says operation not supported. Uh, I'm not sure why that is. Um, maybe it's a security thing. Uh, I could see that that would be uh, the case because it does seem to be sort of heavy on, they, t they talk about security a lot. Oh, Chromium's been added to my, right. Oh, and I had this before, look. Um, so before it went up from something like 16 to 64, now it's saying it wants 128. So I guess this is all to do with Chromium using lots of resources. So let's click on that, click on OK, uh, and that will change that. However, a reboot is required to finalize the installation. So let's press return on that. That's going to reboot itself. So we're back up and running. We've got Chromium now. I did try and install Chromium uh, before. So when it was showing up here before, I installed it with sudo and I tried it with uh, the apps get Chromium or apps get Chromium dash browser uh, and that didn't work. So it'll be interesting to see if this works. Yeah, so this one works fine. So obviously if you're getting it from that list, it's optimized. So this will be interesting to see uh, on the YouTube test, which I couldn't do before. Uh, extensions. So there's no extensions on this. Let's see what happens with YouTube. And this is running from a normal micro SD card. Where's my finished one? That one there. It's got some movement in it. And let's change it to, oh, it looks like it's already picked eight. Yeah, it's already picked 720. Still not got quite to the level of, yes, yeah, bit jerky in it. Looks better when you take it out of uh, full screen. Now we've got some movement. Let's try it on that. Still a bit jerky in it. Okay, so still more work needs to be done on that. Uh, someone has said in the comments that uh, I think it was with Manjaro they had it working very well uh, with, I think it was Chromium or was it Moza? I think it was Firefox. Uh, so let's come out of that. Oh, what I was going to do as well is to have a look at the DiapPi website just to show you uh, briefly all the things that they talk about in the system. Uh, so this is where you find it as well. So I'll put a link in the description. Uh, so lightweight justice for your single board computer. Uh, and so we go down here, uh, extremely lightweight Debian OS with images starting at 400 megabytes, uh, three times lighter than Raspbian Lite, so super small, uh, highly optimized for minimal CPU and RAM resource, simple interface, DiapPi software. So this was the optimized software, so like the Chromium I installed, uh, easy to, con uh, to config. And you can also overclock within the OS as well, which I didn't show, but it's uh, I've done mine uh, using it on another computer, editing the config, because that's just the way I prefer to do it. Uh, DiapPi backup, logging system choices, how much logging you need, get a performance boost with DiapPi RAM log, process tool, control which installed software is higher or lower priority. So there's loads of control on this. I mean, it really is an in-depth operating system. A bit too in-depth for me, um, but uh, but I figured I'd show it. And obviously, if it if it strikes a chord with you, it might be the ideal OS for you to use. Uh, and you can see it's supported by loads of different systems, uh, one of them being the Pi. So if I click on that, there you go. Uh, and there's also a community here, so you can obviously check their forums and ask questions and, and see what you want to get running. I haven't really had a look through that because I only just found this yesterday. But uh, but anyway, uh, I'm pretty impressed with it. It's, uh, it's again, something different. It's, uh, it's amazing how many different things are supported on the Raspberry Pi uh, and the Raspberry, especially the Raspberry Pi 4 uh, being the more powerful system. I always look at Hot UK deals, uh, especially this time of year. It's going to get good. 4K now, keep now TV for £25. That seems cheap. Anyway, uh, I hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.